Hi, welcome to the Interaxis YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk more about lending and now we're going to go into peer-to-peer -peer lending in the decentralized world. Now again, this is a topic that we've discussed probably a few times in different videos, but we want to talk about it now in the context of this week or, or two weeks we're talking about lending because now we're going to go into some other lending topics eventually and, and we need to uh, come back and, and talk about it here first. So what is peer-to-peer -peer lending. Well, I'm going to go back to, to my original example that I always go back to, right? The, the original peer-to-peer -peer loan is Adam lends money to Ron, right? I lend him, this is true peer-to-peer. -peer. This is people who know each other and there's some level of trust here, right? I trust that he's going to pay it back. I might or might not say, hey, can you give me some collateral? Um, I, I've seen what he's going to spend the money on and I feel relatively comfortable that he's going to pay me back. Okay, there are lots of different parts of that that need to be unpacked when you start making it decentralized. Okay, because we talked in a previous video about the pooled lending and the pool basically says, okay, at some point the banks took over this process, right? We said we're going to outsource our trust to, to the, the banks. Right, because the bank said, look, we'll make sure, Adam, that we don't lose your money, and, that, and we'll make sure, Ron, that, that we'll, we'll underwrite you and we'll decide if you're a good uh, credit candidate and we'll lend you money, and they get to, to make the spread in between here. Right? The banks took that over, other companies have taken that over, and the, proto the lending protocols have said, we, we're going to take that where we're going to be a pool of money that Adam can put money into that will get loaned out and Adam will get to participate in the, the growth. Adam will get to participate in the interest. We're going to have to give him the incentive to put money in and we're going to have to give Ron the incentive to borrow and, and put up some sort of collateral. Okay. However, now, what if we don't want to have that protocol in the middle? Right? Because that protocol has, has obviously got to take some fees and they have to make some assumptions about the the um, incentives on both sides, the supply and demand, they have to put up a, a, a collateral. What if we want to have some sort of relationship here, but uh, it, maybe we know each other, maybe we don't. Let, let's assume we don't, Adam and Ron don't actually know each other, right? So in this case, it's Adam's wallet, right? It's a, it's a crypto, it's an ETH wallet, and it's Ron's wallet. Now, Ron, and he connects his wallet, and says, I want to borrow a uh, thousand die. Right, so he wants to borrow this thousand die. I connect my wallet and I say, look, I have a thousand die I would like to lend. What are my options here? So now there might be a protocol, a marketplace, whatever, where we can get together. This marketplace of all these people that want to borrow and all these people that, that want to lend. And, and again, it's somewhat theoretical, but, but this is actually out there. Because again, we might not want to go through a protocol where I just put a whole bunch of, of liquidity providers, a whole bunch of lenders on one side and borrowers on the other, and we don't actually get matched up. We're counting on the protocol to, to create supply and demand or, or understand the supply and demand on both sides. What I'm saying is, maybe I want to make this loan directly, because if I do, then I can set the terms. And I might say, Ron, look, you don't have to put up 200% collateral. You can only put up 100% collateral if it's okay. So for a thousand die, let, let's say ETH is worth 200 each, you only have to put up five ETH. And Ron says, that's great because on the lending protocol, I would have to put up 10. I only have to put up five, that's awesome. What's the catch? And I say, well, the catch is instead of charging you, instead of charging you 10%, I'm gonna charge you 12%. Okay, and he's like, well, that's great. I'd rather pay you 12%, but only have to put up half the amount of collateral. We can make that arrangement. This ETH can get locked into a smart contract that says that if the value falls below a certain point, I might say, look, I'm not going to auto liquidate. I'm not gonna liquidate just because the value falls below a certain point. Let's say if the value of ETH falls to you know, $175, I'm gonna give you, Ron, the opportunity to put more ETH in, into the smart contract so that you don't get liquidated 
Okay, I, I don't want you to be hurt because of it, because the value just dropped. We're also going to decide what the oracle is. So we might decide the oracle is chain link, we might decide the oracle is just whatever the price is on Coinbase, whatever. But we can now make those decisions, we can put those in the smart contract. I can get paid, in, instead of getting paid maybe 3% on a lending protocol, maybe I get paid 5%, right? Because there's fewer intermediaries. He's paying 12, I'm getting paid 5 or 6, whatever it might be. Or we might have a direct relationship where of the 12, I'm actually getting 10. Okay, so there are smart contracts that can be built like that. This is the peer-to-peer -peer system. Now I made this very rudimentary. Okay, it's two people. Now once you have the structure for peer-to-peer -peer lending, the peers don't have to be people. The peers can be companies. And this doesn't have to be Adam, Adam's, wallet, Adam's wallet, wallet and Ron's wallet necessarily. It could be the company a, company a and Company B. Now, why is that so important? Because there are so many company-to-company debt-related transactions, credit-related transactions. There are transactions when I buy something and I, I'll pay for it in 30 days, right? If I can go online and buy a sofa and pay for it in 30 days, over 60, over 90, or 120 days, Right? That is a credit transaction. That is the furniture company offering me credit, saying, Adam, you don't have to pay us yet. That's somewhat of a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. They've had to look at me and decide, is Adam credit worthy? Is he going to pay us back? Because if he doesn't, we're probably not going to go get the sofa. So we got to figure out if he's going to pay us back. So what that means is, is for, for Ron, for the borrower, you have to know about things like credit. You have to know about uh, potentially other assets. You might have to know about income. So now, like I said, we have all these nuances that we have to understand about how people interact on a, on a lending basis, on a peer-to-peer -peer lending basis. So now let's say Adam is no longer the, uh, is no longer Adam, okay, but Adam is some, is a, a, a lumber company or a, a, yeah, a lumber company. And Ron is a home builder. Right, so now what we have is the lumber company lending money to the home builder. What, are they really lending money? No. The home builder might say, look, I need, you know, $100,000 worth of lumber because I'm going to build some houses. And, and the home builder is getting money from the, from the owner of the home, for, for instance. Right? Well, they have to wait for their money from the owner. The home builder is, is, says, I need this lumber. So the lumber comes here, and the lumber company says, well, we, we like your business. We want more business from you. So we're going to let you pay for this in 60 days, right? two months, because you're going to have to wait for the owner to pay you, and we know that. But we don't want you to wait to have to have cash, because our whole system is not built on cash. Our whole economic system is built on debt. It's built on the promise to pay later. So we'll send you the lumber, right? and you can pay us in 60 days, and we might or might not charge you interest based on your credit. And if the home builder has good credit with this particular lumber company, they say, look, you pay us in 60 days. You don't have, even have to pay interest. Uh, because we just want your business, right? But that's, a, that, that's somewhat of debt funding. That's somewhat of credit funding because now what happens if the home builder doesn't pay? Is the lumber company going to go get their lumber? No, they have to have some other uh, ramifications. But this happens all the time in the world. This happens so much more than, than paying cash or, or even paying with a, a credit card right away. This isn't even paying a credit card. You're not outsourcing this particular transaction to a credit card company. The lumber company is saying, we will take on this debt. Okay, well now what happens when it's their uh, a wallet versus a wallet, right? And they don't even know each other. They might be half a world away. They don't know each other. Well, now you have to take that relationship and put it in in code terms. What does a good credit home builder mean in terms of code that we can put into a wallet? What is this lumber company looking for? Is there some sort of collateral they have to put up? How are they going to pay? Are they going to pay in die? Are they going to pay in cryptocurrency? Right, which is much more, which much faster transaction. How are they going to do that? How do we know who this is in, in order for, you know, for potentially tax purposes or, or whatever other purposes? All right, so you have all these other items that come in when you have peer-to-peer -peer lending, but peer-to-peer -peer lending is huge worldwide because it's 
company to company, it's company to individual. It's the home builder giving credit to the owner saying, look, I will build the house for you. You don't have to pay me all the time cash right away so that I can pay these people. I'm going to extend this credit that they're extending to me. I'm going to go ahead and extend it to you. Peer-to-peer -peer lending is huge and it's not always, again, the Adam lending money to his friend Ron. Okay, Peer-to-peer -peer means one entity or person lending money to another uh, usually for some sort of business purposes. It's not usually I'm going to let you borrow money so you can buy me a drink. It's I'm going to let you borrow money so you can do, you know, in, enact some sort of business. You can buy something. You can make your business grow. Um, and, and you will pay me back. And I think so based on the value of that business, based on what I think it will create, I think you will have the ability to pay me back. And whether or not you're able to lend that money and have a, a reasonable chance of getting back, have some sort of collateral, right? A mortgage is essentially a peer-to-peer -peer loan, right? It's the mortgage company, so in this case the bank or the mortgage company, lending money to me, to Adam, to buy my house, and they've decided if I'm credit worthy. Well, there's a whole lot of underwriting that goes in there. What if you could codify? What if you could put that underwriting capability in, in code, and they don't have to know very much about me. I can share the, the information that's in my wallet with them, and they can know instantly, and maybe I have to offer some sort of a collateral. Maybe eventually, this goes back to our talk a, our talks a few weeks ago on tokenizing real old assets, maybe my home, maybe the deed to my home is tokenized. In such case that if I don't repay, the bank then just owns my house. Okay, and they can do it because it's tokenized in all the rules and regs. Again, that's, that's far off here in the U.S., but it might happen more and more in other countries more quickly that don't have the same property laws that we have. They don't have the same legal foundation for property and, and for lending and everything that we do. Okay, so those are peer-to-peer -peer loans, and it's so important to understand peer-to-peer -peer lending and how decentralized finance and how cryptocurrency and blockchain is taking over uh, it, some of those, a lot of those functions and making it easier and cheaper because, again, in this, in this case of, of the peer-to-peer the -peer loans, I will go back to my most rudimentary example so that we can extrapolate from there. And what is my most rudimentary example? It's the Adam and Ron, right? Adam is here and Ron is here, but what if Adam is here in the U.S. and Ron is somewhere, uh, we'll call it uh, Indonesia, and Ron needs to borrow 50 bucks, right? That is a really expensive transaction. That is really expensive for me to try to send him 50 bucks. I know, I've tried. Okay? And that might be all he needs to get through like a month or two, uh, again, I don't know what the exchange rates are, I don't know what the cost of living is, I just made up a country, so I apologize if I didn't get that right, but that might be enough money to get through a couple months, I'm letting him borrow it with the idea that I will get paid back and we can lock all this in a smart contract. But if I try to do this in dollars, and I try to send him money from my bank account, that's probably gonna cost 30 bucks in wire fees or something, and then he's gotta send it back, and this whole transaction cost us too much. There, there's also um, currency risk, right? Exchange rate risk, all those things. Whereas if it's, if it's all done in a decentralized way, I don't know, I might not know where Ron is, right? All I know is there's some wallet here that seems to have a good credit history, that seems to have paid things back, that has potential for collateral, and my wallet, looks through this marketplace and says, I want to lend money to that wallet. Here's the deal. You, you get to borrow 50 bucks. You can pay me back in 60 days. Uh, I'm going to charge you 10% interest. And, and our two, we, we both sign the transaction and it happens, right? And, and you have maybe $50 worth of ETH locked up here and it's done. And those kinds of loans can happen. Now, extrapolate that into companies in the U.S. and companies in other country extrapolate that into microtransactions, into loans for one day or five days or ten days, factoring loans, all of that, and now you have the basis for, to, to say, look, peer-to-peer -peer lending, not the pooled lending we've seen, but peer-to-peer -peer lending can completely upset the lending industry. And I know that sounds super far-fetched, but the problem is there's so many transactions, there's so many transaction fees, and there's so much friction in those businesses. You also see where you can go from pool to peer. 
okay? Because I can have a pool, I, I can get a pool of loans, right? So Adam and, and several other people can put money into, into a pool, and then the pool can lend money out. And we, it could just be me, it could be me and several other people, and this almost creates like a fund where this pool is going to find these individual wallets that want to borrow money and, and create ev a transaction with every one of them. But we can do it programmatically. We can say, look, here's the parameters we're looking for. And if we find those parameters in a wallet and in a request, we're just going to make the loans. And we can do it programmatically. And those loans could be one day, five days, 10 days, 30 days, 60 days, whatever they can be. And in the meantime, we're just making, we're just making interest. Right, because our little pool that we've created is able to lend money out. And we might do, start that with 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 dollars and be able to make all these micro loans. But if we were to try to do that in the traditional system, the fees and the friction and, and the regulations, quite honestly, would bog us down too much. And we can't really do it, but that can happen now. And that's why we talk about how great it is to have excess participation and increased participation in the system and increased access to the financial system. So that is a bit about peer-to-peer -peer lending. We're going to go way farther into peer-to-peer -peer lending and, and how that that works, uh, and, and how that works on chain, off chain, and, and some of the use cases for it. But I wanted to talk a little bit about it. I get a little bit excited about it, um, and I hope you do too. Please subscribe. Please give us any comments uh, down below if you have any. Whether you liked it, whether you have questions, whatever, we we try to answer those. Info at interaxis.io is also our email address. Find us Twitter at interaxis8, the number eight. We'll see you in the next video.